Welcome to the Soldiers National Cemetery at Gettysburg National Military Park. I'm Mary Turkmina, a licensed battlefield guide here at Gettysburg, and we're standing close to the grave of Private Henry Gooden, one of two U.S. Colored Troop soldiers that did not fight here at Gettysburg, but are buried here in our Soldiers National Cemetery. Whether it was Henry Gooden, someone in Henry Gooden's family, or someone he fought with, they thought it was important that he be buried here at Gettysburg, not too far from where Abraham Lincoln gave his Gettysburg Address that inspired the North to continue to fight during the Civil War to eliminate slavery and to provide equality for all. While we continue the struggle toward equality, let's not forget the service of these African Americans and how hard their struggle was during the Civil War to participate in the struggle for the freedom of more than four million African-American slaves in the South. When the war began in 1861, the war was all about reunion, putting this broken country back together again. But abolitionists in the North continued to fight for emancipation, and many African-Americans believed that this war, even with these limited war aims, could be a catalyst for change and the elimination of slavery. Frederick Douglass was the most eloquent spokesman for his people during the war and early in the war frederick Douglass predicted the free colored americans cannot be indifferent to the progress of this struggle out of this strife will come freedom though the methods are not yet clearly apparent public opinion purified by the fiery ordeal through which the nation is about to pass will rightly appreciate the cause of its political disquiet and apply the remedy it must be that the key to the solution to the present difficulties is the abolition of slavery, not as an act of retaliation on the master, but as a measure of justice to the slave, the sure and permanent basis of a more perfect union. When the Civil War began in 1861, there were 16,000 soldiers in the United States Army. The need for troops was filled by volunteers, and many men from states who already served in militia units that were in place before the war began. Even though men of color had served and fought for independence in the Revolutionary War and against the British again in the War of 1812, by 1861, they were prohibited from serving in the U.S. Army and state militias. Although many tried to volunteer, they were rejected. Despite being rejected, many filled important roles that supported the U.S. Army, including as teamsters driving supply wagons, laborers, and cooks for the Army. Many light-skinned African Americans joined all white units and fought right next to white soldiers. And some towns even created units that were all African American or all men of color that drilled during the war, anticipating their possibility of joining the fight. Like other soldiers, they fought for many different reasons, but for many of these African Americans, it was intensely personal. They were fighting not only for the freedom of these African American slaves in the South, but also for their right to be treated as an equal and a full citizen of the United States. By July of 1862, their wait had ended. The U.S. Congress passed laws permitting the service by African Americans and other men of color. And by September of 1862, Abraham Lincoln issued the Preliminary Emancipation Proclamation, promising that by January 1st of 1863, the slaves in the South would be free. It wasn't perfect, that Preliminary Emancipation Proclamation, meant that slaves in Delaware, Maryland, Kentucky, and Missouri, loyal but slave states to the Union, were not free, but it was a light shone down that long, dark tunnel toward freedom. Almost immediately, regiments in South Carolina areas already in the hands of the Union and regiments in Louisiana were formed and called U.S. Colored Troops. At the beginning, they were paid what other troops were paid and received the same rations. They were led often by officers of color. But over the next several months, these officers of color were pushed out and they were now led by only white officers. And then in 1864, their pay was cut. They continued to serve even through this pay cut, 
knowing it was unequal and unfair. And many of them refused the pay for that reason, but they continued to fight. This wasn't fixed until March of 1865, when their pay was again raised to equal other soldiers. When Abraham Lincoln issued the Emancipation Proclamation effective January 1st of 1863, it officially expanded the war aims, no longer just of reunion, but now also to eliminate slavery. And now the floodgates opened. Thousands of African Americans signed up to join the fight. Frederick Douglass passionately called for African Americans to serve. He wrote, by every consideration which binds you to your enslaved fellow countrymen and the peace and welfare of your country, by every aspiration which you cherish for the freedom and equality of yourselves and your children, by all the ties of blood and identity, which makes us one with the brave black men now fighting our battles in Louisiana and South Carolina. I beg you to fly to arms and smite with death the power that would bury the government and your liberty in the same hopeless grave. The Confederate Congress soon passed laws that permitted the death penalty for officers of US colored troop regiments and permitted the sale into slavery of any soldiers serving in those US colored troop regiments. And there were atrocities, claims of murder by Confederate soldiers against surrendering African-American soldiers at places like Fort Pillow and Milliken's Bend. But by the end of the war in 1865, more than 200,000 African-Americans had fought for the cause and over 8,000 of them died in that fight. And more than 20 earned our highest military honor in this country, the Congressional Medal of Honor, for their courage and valor on the battlefield. With this background, let's talk about Henry Gooden. He was from Carlisle, Pennsylvania, and he joined up in August of 1864. His enlistment papers show that he was 43 years old at the time, five foot three inches tall, a little bit shorter than the average uh, soldier in the North, and a laborer. With other recruits, he was sent to Camp William Penn outside of Philadelphia for training. And once training was completed, he was assigned to the 127th U.S. Colored Troop Regiment. Under this banner, titled, We Will Prove Ourselves Men, the regiment saw action in the last battles of the war and was present at Appomattox Courthouse, Virginia, when Robert E. Lee surrendered the last remnants of his Army of Northern Virginia to Ulysses S. Grant on April 9, 1865. This regimental banner was one of 11 designed by African-American artist David Bustell Bowser for regiments of U.S. colored troops. Along with his portraits of Abraham Lincoln and John Brown, Bowser was an artist whose works were the first widely viewed positive images of African-Americans painted by African-Americans. Like so many others, Henry Gooden answered the call to arms to fight for the freedom of African-Americans he had never met. As the nation continues to struggle for equality for all and to create that more perfect union that Frederick Douglass talked about, let's not forget those who fought during the Civil War. Their sacrifice is recognized in the African-American Civil War Museum in Washington, D.C. and the memorial right outside, as well as here at Gettysburg.